Good morning. Good morning. Can the people in the back hear me? Yeah? Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I want to welcome everybody to Rally Day. Uh, this is one for the memory books. Uh, we are happy to be able to do this, and it's been a lot of steps to get to this place. Our every intention is this is just the beginning. While we have the fortune of weather that lets us be outside, our plan is to, to do that as much as possible. If we have weather that forces us inside, then we will do that. Uh, we had the pre-registration today, in part just to have a sense of who's here, but also to, to prepare, but also to get us trained. Because if we do need to go inside, there are regulations about how many people we can accommodate in the sanctuary. Uh, currently, it's about 56 people. Uh, and so we need to be mindful of that, and we'll give, of course, priority to people who have signed up, uh, either by calling the church office or signing up online with the link we've been sending out. The details are on our website as well, westavonchurch.org. Um, and so we, we have to do these things to kind of maintain uh, space and try to keep each other healthy. Uh, when we do end up inside, there's been work going on to kind of mark off so that uh, the spaces where people will be will be separated from one another a bit. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes. We, we are trying our best to kind of learn in this new world uh, how to do church. And uh, for folks who have uh, been on the journey online, uh, I, I thank you for your patience and for joining in. Um, it's been really nice to have the little chat for those who are doing it at the moment that it's happening. And also to see folks with the coffee hour we've been able to do right afterwards uh, as we've gone through these really six months. Um, as we are doing a new thing, we've been kind of giving instructions, but I know sometimes uh, not, not every detail kind of sticks. So I'm just going to give you some of the broad strokes here. If you have any questions, um, we have deacons who are helping us out, both current uh, members of the board and also f former members who are living up to that deacons for, a deacon is a deacon for life motto. Uh, deacons who are here, can you raise your hand and hold them up for a second? So if you see these folks who ha whose hands are up, if there's anything that you're not sure about, you have questions, you need help, uh, they'd be helping, happy to try to help you get the answers to do that. So what we're doing in, in, is to try to go ahead and keep our masks on. Uh, and I, I know that that's not the favorite thing for folks, um, but that's something that helps us to feel safe and to make sure that folks can feel safe coming and not worry. Um, so if, if there's not a medical reason not to, we, we really need you to do that, and that's, that's one, of the, one of the priorities that we have. Also, um, in terms of building use, uh, if there's an emergency, someone needs to use the bathroom ur urgently, there is an open door next to that air conditioner external unit right there to get in. We're trying as much as possible to though, stay outside um, and, and to kind of have this be the focus of what we're doing. I saw folks were visiting as we were getting started, and that's something we have missed so much. I will caution you, right after this ends, don't, don't, don't immediately go to old habits and kind of get those, those, uh, those parking lot groups all together. Uh, so if you are visiting with folks, go ahead and, and, and maintain some distance while you're doing that if they're not part of your immediate family group. Um, but, uh, and there won't be coffee hour afterwards. There won't be food, refreshments. Um, so uh, we'll be heading out after the service here. Those are some of the, the, the biggest pieces. If you have any other questions about other smaller pieces, please, again, just let us know or let me know. Um, also, though, I want to highlight a few other things. I, I pointed out the deacons who are helping us, and we're so grateful for that. Uh, two of our boards especially uh, could really use additional folks to help out, and those are the Board of Deacons could use some more folks. You can see they've got a big job on their hands right now. And also, our, our Board of Outreach could really use some folks to come in and to help and to come up with ideas about how this church can be involved in outreach in these times. Um, so these meetings right now are taking place online through Zoom, and you can also phone call into that if you're not comfortable with the video technology. Um, so we would love to have you join in. It's, it's, it's honestly the easiest commute you've had if you've ever done a volunteer here at the church. So um, this may be the perfect time to join in. Also, we've had ongoing activities that are continuing online. Uh, Tuesday evening, we'll be continuing Bible study that we're doing twice a month, first and third Tuesdays. This will be wrapping up our sessions on how the Bible we have came together, what, how the books that we have got there. We're looking at the New Testament, and we'll be deciding what we're doing starting next month. 
Thursday morning at 10 a.m., we have our twice a month bereavement group that's online. So if you know of someone who is in a stage where they are dealing with grief, um, it's, it's open to anybody and you can invite them and I'm happy to give information and details uh, to help out with that. As I mentioned, we'll continue to be outside as long as we can, um, but we'll also have continuing events outside. One of the things we did in August was to have uh, an instrumental hymn play and it was wonderful to have folks join up right over here and have some of our talented musicians uh, get out here and share some wonderful familiar tunes. Because that was so appreciated uh, next Sunday evening, we're going to have another one of those. The music might even be a little bit more varied in terms of some of the things that they will share. They're always happy to have other instrumentalists join in and be a part of that. So if you have interest and would like to be a part of it, Mary, who's sitting right here next to me, would be happy to connect you in. Um, but that was wonderful, and we're, we'd like to continue to have some opportunities like that. I know some of our small groups have also begun discussing getting together maybe on the patio or doing things like that uh, to see each other in person. I mentioned it was instrumental uh, for this next gathering. One of those things, the guidelines that we're being given is saying that getting together in groups and singing, which especially you think about our choir, but the congregation as a whole, um, enjoys and it's meaningful uh, but again, it's one of those things that kind of contributes to spreading things around a lot more. So for the time being, we're not singing congregationally. We are, though, because we're outside here especially, gifted to have our, 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 our church instrumental and music staff here. Um, so Don and Andre are going to be sharing our music with us this morning. Um, and so we're really uh, grateful for that. The last thing I'm going to highlight is that uh, we had last month our That's Whack 5K. It was an online 5K. You could do it in any way you wanted. Uh, you just had to kind of, once you're done, report what you did. Um, I made a bet that I would have the slowest time of anybody for their 5K, and I lost that bet. Uh, so I have to give a dollar to Gifts of Love. Um, so I, I, that, that, that's, that, that's more about the pride in the thing. I'm trying to figure out what our next ante will be as we go forward for future events. Uh, one of the things that came out of that is that everybody who participated has waiting for them, and Mary will share them with them, WACC socks, custom designed for this occasion. Very stylish, as you can see, wearing them, yeah? You want these. I know you do. So we ordered some extras, and they're in different sizes. And it, for a $10 donation, that's going to go ahead and, and offset the cost and also help in terms of money we're giving to Gifts of Love. Uh, you can purchase, as long as we have the surplus, uh, socks for yourself. Once again, Mary is the person to speak to, uh, to go ahead and make that happen. So those are the things that I know of that needed to be highlighted. Are there other announcements, other news, other things we want to make sure folks know about this morning? So the last note I'm going to tell you is, uh, we've had a lot of work going on to get this so that it's live online as well. The camera is right here, it's pointing this way. Uh, but just want everyone to be mindful of that, that we've been trying to be very careful with our online sharings because they're open to the public to try to preserve people's privacy. Um, and, and, you know, the staff, we're, we're on the website, people know we work here, um, but we try to do that with other things. And so just be mindful of that in terms of things that we share during our worship uh, so that, again, we can look, at, look after each other. So now what I'd like to do is to share a meditation to gather our thoughts as we start our worship today. Uh, this is by uh, Renair Re Marie Rilke from Letters to a Young Poet, and she said, Believe in a love that is being stored up for you like an inheritance, and have faith that in this love there is a strength and a blessing so large that you can travel as far as you wish without having to step outside it. So as we think about that love and that blessing, I would ask that you would join your heart with mine in prayer, and uh, as part of this, we will share the Lord's Prayer as well. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the ability to gather here in the beauty of the surroundings that we have. We ask, God, that you would help us. Help us as we reconnect with each other. Help us as we continue to worship you no matter where we are no matter what is happening. Help us to understand that we are surrounded by your love, that it is larger than anything we've ever experienced, 
that it is more powerful than anything in this world, and that we can trust in you and trust in that love, for you will always be with us no matter where we are. God, as we lift this prayer to you, we ask that you would hear us as we now join together offering the prayer our Savior taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now we're going to hear our first hymn of the morning, The Sun is on the Sea and Shore. I mean, this year started. Uh, we passed around baskets and chose a star with a word on it. So the idea, you all know better than me, you've been here longer, mostly. The idea with Star Wars is really whatever you want it to be. Something to meditate on, something to inspire you, something to think about for a day, lose and find again six months later. So when I drew my word, I was honestly a little disappointed. I really wanted something like big, something prophetic, something just like life changing. I couldn't really see what I was going to need my word for this year. My word for 2020 is strength. Boy, oh boy, have we needed copious amounts of strength this year. I could literally spend all morning listing off all the times this year I've needed strength, but I won't. I feel like I've sucked every ounce of strength out of this tiny piece of paper that it ever had. And that's saying something because we all know the paper is stronger than rock when we do rock, paper, scissors. I grew up in a family heavily involved in the scouting community. One of our rules to live by is to leave things better than you found them. So with that in mind, I want to spend the last quarter of my year replenishing my star card word. Strength isn't always about giving. A lot of times it's about reserving. It can take a lot more strength to speak up and say no than it might to just let something happen. I want to look for places where I can use my strengths to fortify situations. I want to use the strength in my ears and my heart to listen and love with my friends, my family, my co-workers, my congregation, and my world. I hope whoever gets strength is their word in 2021 receives it fully charged and ready to support. 
I'll work to refill my Star Wars so much that it overflows and seeps into all of us, giving us all the strength to live out 2020 with full hearts. I'm smiling under my mask. I know you can't see. <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Dear God, it's so nice to be praying to you from the church again. Thank you for your patient guidance as we move forward with all these new forms of worship and learning. Please help us to stay strong through your love, sparkling down on us from the stars above. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just a word of warning, sometimes you get the same star word the very next year, and that's happened to me. So. Uh, you may wonder what you missed in trying to do all this, uh, but sometimes that can be even a deep, more deeper and meaningful. I hope you were thinking about your, your star words. I know we're partway through a year that seems like, as, as Mary was indicating, like it's been a lot of years already. Uh, but when we hit that new year and epiphany, um, we like to have people reflect on these words in this journey. Um, if you didn't get one when we were doing it, we can always give you. We have more. Um, so happy to share those with you. Well, this morning on Rally Day, one of the things we like to do is to share Bibles with some of our young folks. And we know that not everybody can be here today or, or is yet feeling like this is the place to be for worship rather than being online. Um, but we wanted to go ahead and have the Bibles here, uh, some of them, there's some more, um, and to, to, to take a moment to bless them and to bless our young people and as they learn about God and they learn about the stories that help to shape us. Um, I believe I've seen at least one of our kindergartners here. So let me say, if we have any kindergartners or eighth graders here, um, kindergartners, if, if you want to come forward with an adult, a grown-up, and grab one of these Bibles. And do we have any of our eighth graders here today? I don't believe we do. I know the sports was also a, a thing. Uh, and it's nice that there is some resumption of some normal activities that folks get to enjoy. Great. All right. Sorry. Awesome. By the way, the Bible that she's getting is one that some of you may wish you had sometimes when we start looking into these stories because there are pictures to help you to understand it better, you know, things that can help out. Kind of like the children's time is often the message that folks uh, are able to actually comprehend in the worship service. Um, so this can be a, a gift through life. Uh, let's have a moment of prayer as we ask a blessing on our young people, um, not only kindergartners and eighth graders, but all those who are going to be learning about God. God, as we move forward into this new time, we know that we have to adapt, and we are thinking especially of our young people because they have made incredible, incredible changes in their lives to adapt. When we think about the young people and our families here at the church, we want to ask that you would continue to be a part of their lives to help to guide them each day, to help to give them moments where they gain wisdom from you and from the people that you've surrounded them with. We ask God that you would help them to feel loved every single day, to know just how precious each and every one of those children is to you. And we ask God that those that we're sharing these Bibles with this year would be able to go and to look and to find all of the ways that you have been a part of people's lives generation after generation and maybe discover that that means you will be with us forever and that we can trust you no matter what we pray this in your holy name amen so now we're going to have our scripture reading for this morning A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 19 to 31. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched his hand out over the sea. 
The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. May our hearts and minds be open to the lessons of this reading. So now we're going to hear our second hymn, Christians We Have Met to Worship. strange after half a year to stand up at this point and look out and there actually be people uh, there looking at me instead of a computer screen or a camera or an array of dogs that are bored to death so they've gone to sleep and hopefully won't wake up and start barking while I'm talking. Um, so it's great to see you this morning. Um, it's, it's a little tough. Uh, I don't know why Mary picked this passage this morning. This is not exactly uh, the, the most uh, totally upbeat story, Mary. I mean, uh, you couldn't yeah, no, sorry, okay. Um, for folks who have been following along in worship over the summer, we uh, have been looking at stories beginning in Genesis and moving forward and learning about those early kind of leaders in faith and some of the stories of their lives and the journey uh, that they go through with God. And as we've been hearing about Moses and making our way through that journey, 
uh, we've now made our way to this point. One of the advantages today, as difficult as it is to hear about this, this combat that happens between God and the Egyptian army and the results of that, is that after last week hearing about the plagues that are visited upon Egypt because Pharaoh will not relent and let the enslaved Hebrew people go, uh, it's hard to get much more difficult than what we hear taking place in those battles of will. Still, we come to this passage and we hear very clearly a message that is preserved that says that God, working through Moses, ends the lives of that entire army that is pursuing and trying to recapture and re-enslave the Hebrew people. This past week, we had time to go ahead, hopefully each person, to be mindful and to think about the events of 9-11, to never forget what took place and the toll that so many felt very, very personally because of that experience. When we think of those times, perhaps we can remember that members of different faiths and different religions stepped forward and offered in their minds the ways that God was responsible for different parts of what happened during those events. It's easy sometimes to go ahead and to do that, to take God and to decide for ourselves what we think God has done and why God has done it and what we need to do about it. The difference contained here is that scripture is relating to us this message that says, God said it would happen, God made it happen, it was in fact God directly a part of this. So what do we do with a story like this? The story of the parting of the Red Sea, but then the ending of the Egyptian army? Well, folks over time have played around with this, they've tried to explore it. Uh, there is very validly one thing, for instance, that is when you look at the description and you see the words that are actually contained there in the original language, it seems that when the Septuagint was being written, and if you want to know what that is, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., Bible study on how the Bible came together, so you'll have all the details. But a very formative piece that so many people base their translations of Scripture on afterwards took a word that was contained there, and which is translated pretty much everywhere as reed, as in that plant that grows, red, as in the Red Sea. Most likely, they thought they knew where the events took place, and so they just kind of nudged it a bit so it was clear to everybody. But if in fact it is the Sea of Reeds or the Reed Sea, people have thought about that and they said, well, maybe it's not such an immense body of water. Maybe it was something that maybe would be difficult to cross, but the winds helped to make it totally possible to cross. And meteorologists have si signed in to say, yes, there are times when winds blow hard enough in certain places that it can push the water back and you can have a path that's made for you and so on and so forth. People have gone to this to try to minimize it, to rationalize it, to make it a little bit more palatable. How could that have happened? If they struggle with that Charlton Heston scene and those walls of water on either side, they try to go ahead and contain it and make it maybe less scary or make it something that they can totally understand. No matter what happened and where it happened, what it meant to the people involved doesn't change. Here you had a whole people who had spent generations in slavery. And now they had found liberty and they were just beginning to make their way out of that life, going on a promise from God to go to a, a place that would be new to them and to see what it held. And yet, even as Pharaoh had said they could finally go after all the plagues that took place in the battle between Moses and Pharaoh and God, Pharaoh continues to feel like he does not want to lose. And when the people find themselves with water behind them and Pharaoh's army before them, he can't stop himself. And even though he said they can go, he sends his army forward to try to go ahead and to recapture them or to eliminate them, to get rid of this problem. He won't stop. He won't relent. And the people that this army are coming for are families. Generations of children and parents, adults, grandparents, people of all ages, all different backgrounds, none of whom had served in the military. And here they see this army with horses and chariots coming for them and only held at bay by a pillar of fire or cloud, by God's presence right there before them. When they have to face this, 
they have only one real weapon to summon. It's found a little bit earlier in this chapter from Genesis in verses 13 through 14. God speaks to the people and says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. That's what they had. Again, by thinking about 9-11, it's important to note that this is not one of those situations where someone says, you know what, God likes me, I'm doing a pretty good job, and so if I'm involved in something, God's going to help me to come out on top. I'm going to win that game, I'm going to win that conflict, no matter what it is, God's going to do that for me. That's great if you think that's what's going to happen, and you think you understand God's plan and God's motives and God's wisdom, seeing so much more of the picture than you. That's wonderful that you believe you have that insight. But that's a lot different than God communicating and saying, in this moment, this is what I will do right now. That's not taking for granted or coming up to our own ideas. That's God. Hearing this, the Israelites choose faith. They trust. They trust in God in a time that seems impossible that they're going to go any further and on the other side of this, Pharaoh chooses death. The way he treats enslaved people, his unrelenting pursuit, the fact that he has been convinced in so many ways of the power of God and God's existence in the first place, and yet he continues to rise up and think somehow it's okay for him to come after the people that God has set free. Pharaoh continues to choose death. And the choice that the Israelites make that gives us the first message that we have today. They give us an example of folks who, because of their trust in God, step out in faith. Gerald Jansen writes about this kind of faith that they have. He says, this faith is the willingness to pick up and carry one's fear in one's bosom like a weaned child and go forward in the direction that trust calls for. Whether we're facing a formidable foe like Pharaoh and his armies, or we have other things that are going on in our life that fill us with fear and worry and seem insurmountable, if you can think of anything right now in our world that feels that way, I, I, I would be with you in saying there are probably a few things that qualify. No matter what it is, one of the messages that we have that has been handed down to us by remembering this story is to remember not to fear, but even in the midst of what seem like impossibly difficult times, to trust in God and God's love, and know that it is big enough that we will never be outside of it. Another message that we gain from our passage today is if you struggle with how that was accomplished, you're not alone. We hear the story and we find, it seems, a, a message of totally who was in the right and who was in the wrong in their purposes. And so maybe that helps. But it is still very difficult to think of all of those folks and, the, and, and what happened to them directly because they continued to pursue those Israelites. In a Jewish journal, there is a passage that tries to wrestle with this. And it says, if we are not happy that evil has been punished, then we do not care enough. But if we are not sad at the loss of life, then our humanity is weakened. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11, it says, As I live, says God, I do not wish for the death of the wicked, but for the wicked to repent of their way, so that they may live. That's God's desire. There is so much interesting discussion that goes on within Judaism and thinking about these, these events that are so important. And in one place, in the Sanhedrin, there is a passage that describes what someone imagines. They imagine after this takes place, this exaltation that's happening, the ministering angels that are around God, they want to break out and sing a song of praise because there has been this decisive victory at last over the Egyptians. They want to offer all of the joy that is in their hearts. And in this imagined moment recorded by a rabbi in this discussion of this passage, there is this response, thinking about what God might say. 
And in response to the, the angels just wanting to let loose and celebrate, God's response is, my handiwork, the Egyptians, are drowning in the sea, and you are reciting a song before me. We talked about last week how God teaches us that there should not be any delight in the suffering of others. That doesn't mean we can't have relief. That doesn't mean we can't exult and be thankful when we are liberated from the things that come after us and know that God is a part of that. But we can't lose our humanity either. The final message I'll just share with you this morning, and it's one that's been coming to us as we uh, the Gospel of Luke. And we hear Jesus' first sermon. When he gets up in that synagogue in his hometown and he looks to the words of the prophet Isaiah, he declares his mission, and in that passage it says that he comes to bring liberty to the captives. And boy, did he. But it doesn't have to be just somebody like Moses, and it doesn't have to be somebody just like Jesus. It can be anyone who takes that moment and decides that they need to stand up and act because God calls them to. I have referred to him a number of times, uh, someone that had such an amazing life to think about. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he was someone who was a minister and a professor and a teacher. And thinking about him, there's some similarities because Moses had found his way out of Egypt and then God calls him and says, you must go back and liberate those who are there. Bonhoeffer was studying in New York as World War II was developing and he could have stayed. He could have been safe. But he felt that he had to go back because he had to minister to his people and he had to stand up in opposition to all the things that the Nazi regime was doing to the church and to people of faith, silencing them, speaking for them, saying what was okay and what was not okay, what God intended, deciding for themselves. Bonhoeffer went back and did his best to lead and to resist. He truly lived a life that modeled words that we have in our denomination statement of faith. He lived a life that explored the cost and the joy of discipleship. And because he did that, he lost his life. Because he did that, we still remember and think about the difference he made. So on rally day, as we think about these messages and what they say to us, maybe that's the one that's gonna linger right now in our hearts. That message that says, even as we're not supposed to fear and even as we're supposed to always look at the humanity of the people around us and never lose that insight, God works through people to help those who need it most when they need it most. And if that's the case, how is God calling you to work with God now to do that very same thing? Amen. If someone would start barking at a squirrel right now, it would help me to feel more uh, relaxed and, and, and familiar. So, um, but failing that, uh, normally at this time in our service, when we're back together, we pass plates around and we do the offering and have that moment of dedication. Uh, that's not gonna happen for a while. Uh, we do have some boxes that were placed on either side. There's one over there. So that if folks have a physical gift that they wanna give uh, in the ministries here, they can do that. We've set up on our webpage for the church a way that people can give online using different forms. Um, a small fee because to do that, as happens when you use those things. Um, but we're so grateful for folks who have found ways to do not only that, but also to volunteer. You're seeing some of the fruits of that labor now. Let's take a moment and just be mindful of the gifts that we can share and we have shared and ask God to bless them and allow them to be used for their best purposes. So join your heart with mine in a moment of dedication. God, you give us so much. You bless us in so many ways. Sometimes they are mighty and they are world-changing. Other times they begin as small seeds of faith within each life that if they are tended and if they grow, are able to make a difference in ways that we may never fully understand. God, help us to share of ourselves. Help us to be generous. Help us to give in so many different ways so that we can be part of building up the kingdom that you have shown to us. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. So another thing we often do on Rally Day is the blessing of the backpacks. Um, sometimes we've given out little things to put on them. And again, just in the mindfulness of trying to be safe in the way that we're doing things, we're not doing the physical pieces on them. Doesn't mean we can't bless them. 
but also it's important to say we talk about backpacks I mean now it's Chromebooks and uh, in some cases iPads and it's it's uh, often now uh, plastic shields that have to be carried around or there in the classroom there are so many other elements that have now become part of each student's classroom and each educator's classroom uh, so there's there's so much that's different and it's important that we bless this brand new experience so uh, I know we've been mindful in prayer, but let's continue in that spirit. So if you would join with me in a moment of blessing. God, as we gather here and we think about folks who've headed back to school or folks who are attending school online, we know that everything has changed. Today we heard a passage of scripture that talked about a whole people that were striking out into a brand new life on a scary journey. And yet the result of that very different time in their life was being able to come to a place that was amazing and new and breathtaking and filled with promise and hope. God, as we think about our young people and we think about our educators and those who are working in support and so many in the homes that are doing their best to help and to teach and to support, so many hands, so many hearts involved in this effort, in this new time, God, we ask your blessing. We ask that you would bless each young person, each educator, each person involved, each home, help them in this new time. Lead them forward. Help them to get through the difficulties and the things that don't go right with great patience and humor. And help us to find ways to continue to teach each other. Help us to find ways to grow. Help us to find ways to become who you know we can be. Amen. Folks, I know... Um, that one prayer that we want to offer up is for Julie, who is in need of healing. Um, are there other prayers in particular that folks would like to share as part of our worship aloud this morning? Are there any? Yes. Uh, the Marsh family from Avon. Okay. Whose daughter fell off a balcony on her head. Yep. Uh, down in Alabama. She's now been transferred up here. She's in ICU at the Hartford Hospital. Okay. So we're going to pray for the young woman in college from an Avon family who fell uh, more than a week ago and, and had a very serious fall and is now in the ICU now in Hartford. Um, so we're going to pray, continue prayers for that family. Other prayers? Anything else in particular we want to raise up? No fair lifting up prayers for the Church Fantasy Football League. Uh, you know, I, we all got to have even odds on this. Yes, Becky, everybody has even odds. Any others? Okay. Well, I'd ask, uh, let's go ahead and think about some prayers right now. I'm going to share a few, but then also at, during this time, you can certainly share any prayers that you have with God as well. God, we give you thanks for this time, but we know that you've been with us no matter where we've been. It's wonderful to see each other, but we can pray for each other again, no matter what we're doing or where we are. So we ask God that you'd help us to continue that and to find in our lives space and time that we set aside for that very purpose. God, as we think about the world around us, we of course think about the continuing effects of this pandemic on health, on livelihood, the stresses that it is bringing to so many. And we pray as we move forward for wisdom in our decisions, but also for a swift answer as to how we can best combat this. We also pray for those in the West who are affected by the wildfires that continue to sweep through that area. It is causing such devastation, and we pray for those families right now that find themselves wondering where their hope will come from. We know that this past week has been a difficult one for so many as we think about the events of 9-11, and so we ask God that our prayers would still and always be with those who were so deeply affected, and that you would find ways each year to offer more healing and more help as a result. We want to offer prayers for Julie in a time where she could use healing. We want to offer prayers for this young college student who is now in the ICU in Hartford, traveled back from college to be treated here closer to family. And we want to pray that they, that healing would take place. And we ask for your help and your guidance for the doctors. God, we ask that you'd hear all these prayers that we're lifting to you now and many more, and that you would respond to them in your mercy and your power and your wisdom. Amen. So we're going to have a final hymn, and then uh, I'll share a few words at the end. But uh, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross is our final hymn this morning.
Jesus, keep me near the cross, where a precious fountain lead all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall fall. So before I give our benediction to conclude our worship and so that we can make our way back to our cars and head out into the world and the week that awaits us, I just want to share a, a few brief things. Once again, do be mindful with masks and, and with distance from each other. Uh, we want everybody to feel safe so that they feel welcome and that they can come back as we continue our worship outside. Uh, I, I want to um, share that we've been learning so much from our Hebrew scriptures over this summer. Um, so it's, it's interesting to hear, again, some of the practices of our sisters and brothers of Jewish faith. September 18th this year is the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, and that's the Jewish New Year. It, it literally means the head of the year, and it's a two-day celebration that includes sometimes the sounding of a shofar, which is a ram's horn, and also eating apples dipped in honey to usher in a sweet New Year. So while we have to wait, uh, most of us, to, to January for a new year and hoping that it will be very different than 2020, uh, there's a new year getting ready to start this week. So let's hope that it is indeed a sweet new year that starts. I think we could all really hope for a change. Uh, it's the sooner the better. I want to offer some special thanks here uh, this morning. Uh, our deacons and former deacons who've been helping out, it's invaluable what they have done to make this happen. Harold Bender and Andre have worked on the tech side of this, and uh, that, that was a feat to do this outside. So hopefully folks are with us live right now, and, um, and we're so grateful for, for that effort. They've been putting in a lot of time trying to, 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 to work this out. Um, and in addition, you know, as we've been pulling through all of this, Lisa's been in the office and finding ways to go ahead and coordinate everything that's happening and trying to keep everybody informed and our different volunteer groups communicating and knowing what's going on from a distance. Mary has been sharing in ministry with our young people and has been such an important part of our worship. Um, I often enjoy what she shares a, a great deal more than mine, but I still want a job, so I do mine too. Um, but it's been fantastic to have that. Um, it's also uh, been an amazing gift uh, to have the music that Andre and Don have shared and we've had in our online and now in person in our worship. So if we could share Thanksgiving for everybody, but also especially our music ministry uh, here at the church. Um, a very strange day for, for Andre. He's used to now hearing himself singing four-part harmony on songs like as he records them over and mixes and does all this stuff. So now it's just the one time. So um, maybe you can sing them four times through or something. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll figure that out. So um, thank you. Thank you for being here. Again, if you have any questions, our deacons are happy to help or you can ask me. But let's just have a final word of blessing as we conclude our rally day and hopefully a brand new year coming for all of us. God, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for joining us together through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for new beginnings, and thank you always for the hope, for the knowledge that nothing in this world is more powerful than you. Nothing that we experience is permanent except you. 
that even as we go through these times that are so strange and different and sometimes very difficult, there are others who have gone through times that we can only begin to imagine. The difficulties that they were able to overcome give us hope. The knowledge that you never left them, that you were with them always, that helps us to understand that even as we leave this worship, even as we head out into each new day, you will be with us. We are blessed. We have been given so much and will be given so much. And that can help us to find true peace as we make our way forward. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We hear the story and we find, it seems, a, a message of totally who was in the right and who was in the wrong in their purposes. And so maybe that helps. But it is still very difficult to think of all of those folks and, the, and, and, and what happened to them directly because they continued to pursue those Israelites. In a Jewish journal, there is a passage that tries to wrestle with this. And it says, if we are not happy that evil has been punished, then we do not care enough. But if we are not sad at the loss of life, then our humanity is weakened. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11, it says, As I live, says God, I do not wish for the death of the wicked, but for the wicked to repent of their way so that they may live. That's God's desire. There is so much interesting discussion that goes on within Judaism and thinking about these, these events that are so important. And in one place in the Sanhedrin, there is a passage that describes what someone 